Hello and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. It's a straight expression now to say that you are the heart of all we do here at Channels TV, particularly on this program, and your feedback matters to us. So we'll take some of the mails we received on our last program with DK Chukumerije, an acclaimed poet and author. Ade Yori Tanimo says this is about the most beautiful, insightful, and brilliant interview I've ever listened to in my entire life. He says, I was blown away by DK Chukumerije's submissions and thoughts tonight. Thank you very much, Malpe, for being, bringing such a deep and thorough thinker to the show tonight. He also says absolutely uh, that he wishes the interview be relayed over and over again. Just think of what he said about the ministerial screening. Absolutely brilliant. How I wish the nation would adopt that method. Well, that's from Ade Yori Tanimo. Vivian Agbongeto says that was a beautiful interview full of real issues. Looking forward to part two. Interesting. I actually watched from beginning to end. Very engaging. Even my wife was listening to. Yes, I was. You bet I was. And Ade Jola Bio says, just finished listening to your program now. It's quite interesting. And more importantly, your guest, DK, the son of our amiable former senator, late Chuku Merije, really spoke eloquently well. We need this type of young brain in the center of national development. May the Lord help Nigeria. And I say... Amen. Well, if you wish to get your voice heard or you missed that interview, our feedback handles are on the screen right now and we wait to hear from you. Tonight, we have another guest. Yusuf Barnabas Bala, also known as Bala Bantex, was the deputy governor of Kaduna State till May the 29th this year when his principal, Governor Nasir El Rufai, was sworn in for a fresh four-year tenor alongside his new running mate, Adiza Balarabi, who now has the record of being the first female deputy governor in the whole of northern Nigeria. Well, the deputy governor, Yusuf Bala, had opted out of the governorship race to run for a Senate seat and represent the people of southern Kaduna, whom he claimed had suffered the poorest senatorial representation Zone 3 had witnessed since 1999. Well, if that vote was a referendum, the people seemed happy with the representation they had as a re-elected incumbent, Nanjuma La, for another four years. Now, for one who is no newcomer to politics, having represented his people at the House of Representatives, served as a two-time local government chairman, served as a party chairman for his state, and was in charge of rural affairs as deputy governor. What went wrong? Oh, Yusuf Bala, Banabas Bala, welcome to Hard Copy. I'm very tempted to just say Bala Bantex, welcome yes, to Hard yes. Copy. <laughs> you will be. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, I'm very, very curious because Kaduna State, it has all the trappings of a state that could be a cosmopolitan city. I mean, it has a lot of federal institutions uh, which you bring people from across the country to that state um, and maybe from outside the country as well. It also has, you know, all the different ethnic groups. Some people say it's a little Nigeria, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But somehow, the politics always fall along the lines of religion and ethnicity. Why does it seem that Kaduna State, State still seems to fall short uh, of the expectations that one would have of a state like Kaduna? Thank you, Maupe. <coughs> well, um, Kaduna State, like, just like you said, um, is a cosmopolitan state. It doesn't look like it is uh, and has been for a very long time because uh, whether it is the retired military generals who from whatever state they come eventually get settled in Kaduna or federal civil servants who from all over uh, the north uh, have res their residents in Kaduna, including Mr. President, who, although originally from Katsuna, but uh, stays in Kaduna, has always stayed in Kaduna all through his retirement up to this moment. We celebrate him as, 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 as an indigenous of Kaduna state. So indeed, you are correct that Kaduna uh, actually is um, a cosmopolitan state. Um, but you know, Kaduna has also had its own fair share of uh, what you find in most parts of this country where 
the fault lines of religion and ethnicity uh, have been heightened, you know, to very uh, um, unbearable, so to say, levels. Uh, you have a state that um, is divided sharply, uh, the northern part and the southern part. Uh, the northern part, the southern part, uh, predominantly Christians, uh, minority tribes, you know, so many of them, and uh, a northern part that is generally Muslim population uh, of the House of Lani's talk and some other um, people living within them, just like in the case of Southern Karuna. But what I think has happened is that over so many years, um, the people, particularly in the southern part, uh, have always seen themselves as the underdog in the in the in the affairs of 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 the state of course this dates back to only god knows when it's not a recent thing and so you find that um, the state is sharply divided into two in terms of the level of prosperity you know among the two sides in in terms of the level of development uh, of the two sides um, uh, even though, of course, I say this with some level of caution because uh, there isn't really been serious development in the first place, so I can't say. But I think what appears to be a lopsided development is the development brought largely about by the people who choose to settle in Kaduna State. And most of them, of course, choose the northern part and have brought along with them the kind of influence that saw government activities you know, hovering around them. And therefore, you can see some kind of lopsidedness. Otherwise, uh, by the time we came into office in 2015, it was a broken system affecting both the northern part and the southern part. If it was in the area of primary education, the children sat on the ground, to, on the floor to, to, to take classes in the northern part as they did in the southern part. If there was poor health care, services you know across the state it was across the entire state so but but of course you see when people go out and they go around and see this level of development of the northern part there is of course bound to be some internal agitation as to what's going on here um, i wouldn't say that governments in the past have done enough to 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 delete this uh, kind of uh, feeling of segregation and so on. Um, that, that has been the case in Kaduna State. And so each time elections uh, draw near, of course, particularly the southern part, tends to gravitate along the politics of ethnicity and religion as a means of bringing themselves together uh, to, to, to go out there with, with one voice. Interestingly, in the yeah. history of Kaduna State, the only Christian uh, governor that the state has had, whether military or civilian, um, was Patrick Yakoa, who died um, in a helicopter crash, yeah. very sadly. Yeah. Um, I'm bringing this to the fore because I remember that once you had a parley with your people, uh, the people of southern Kaduna, mm. um, and you told them not to practice the poli politics of exclusion. Yeah. Uh, they shouldn't see themselves as victims. Yeah. When you know that that has been the feeling amongst your people mm. uh, since even before your time in office, yeah. the question is what was done while you were there to try and address this feeling amongst the people of southern Kaduna? Well, uh, first of all, uh, at the risk of sounding... Um, immodest, I think the first step was to bring me in as a deputy governor. Because uh, take it or leave it, um, I stand fairly tall in, in among those who can say today love the people of Southern, love their people by way of giving good representation 
even outside government. Uh, Interesting, you mentioned the parties. You yes. had represented a part of Southern Kaduna constituency there yes. on the platform of the ACN then. ACN, yes. Yeah, which, yes. you know, is now, you know, has merged into the APC. It, it, it's into the APC. Uh, so I why was... is it that they voted for you then and did not see it as a Muslim party, but later on, you know, thought that the ACN or the APC, as the case might be, was a Muslim party? The ACN was not seen as, uh, as, uh, as a Muslim party. After all, the, the ACN paraded uh, uh, leaders um, like uh, CYG Tinubu, uh, who, although a Muslim, uh, does not appear to, 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 to the people of Southern Kaduna as a, as a Muslim, so to say. Um, when, when, when they react this sharply, they are reacting to uh, Northern Muslims. Uh, because they think uh, that these have been the, 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 they are oppressors, so to say. Yeah, so they, do, they, don't, they don't see so the, it, the, the Southern Muslim yeah. as part of their problem. When I asked you that question about what was done, you said speaking you as a deputy um, well, it's one. is one is one of the, it's it's one one of of the things. But uh, you know, isn't that where the problem be, be, usually be, lies? Be, because be, they think that oftentimes they're just good enough to be deputy. They're not good enough to actually be in the seat. Yeah, yeah. But that is not the doing of anyone. Is is the way is the way the political uh, permutations that lead to to leadership in various offices takes place. It's not. It's it's not the the, the nearest which, of course, the constitution fails to provide for that can allow you that kind of sense of belonging is a rotational uh, arrangement in which maybe the governorship rotates among the three uh, senatorial zones. Does Kaduna zones. have that? We, we don't have that. No state has that. Some it, states have that. It's unspoken, but it's, it's there. Yeah, it's unspoken, but it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I'm saying is this. Um, first of all, you know, you know, there is a lot to do with resources in politics. And uh, also, like I said, this mindset, this we versus them mindset does not create the kind of environment that, that gives the comfort, the necessary comfort level in the northern part for, for them to, because they have to more or less uh, agree to free, you know, the, to, 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 to get the people of the southern part to actually govern the state because of their position. But unfortunately, uh, going by what happened, particularly in the last four years, there, there is this, uh, I don't know how justified one can explain that, uh, how, how justified that is, but there was this general notion that the problem the Southern people of Kaduna had was not with the performance of the government in terms of service delivery to them, but it was about someone perceived to be a Muslim and carrying along certain, uh, certain, uh, 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 certain behaviors that hurt the people on account of his religion and ethnicity. And, and this is a very tricky one. Once you do that, once you do that, it is difficult to have that kind of synergy that normally allows for that kind of arrangement, that unspoken, that, that unwritten word that you talked about. That unwritten word comes through understanding, through engagement. But unfortunately, we didn't have sufficient engagement politically. We, we drew a line and stood out there and said, look, they are this, we are this. Contrary to what some of us believe in life, that good people are everywhere on both sides of the divide, as just as well as bad people. So what some of us do in life, that's for me, is to look out for good people, God-fearing people from whatever side of the divide and work with them. Mm. Well, we take a moment now when we return, our guest will speak on his relationship with the current governor of Kaduna State. Please stay with us.
Welcome back. You're watching Hard Copy coming to you from our studios in Abuja. Our guest tonight is Yusuf Barnabas Bala, also known as Bala Bantex, the immediate past deputy governor of Kaduna State. And we're talking politics in his state and in Nigeria in general. Now, do you yeah. think then that we should be practicing politics as just federal and local governments? Do you think that that would help us to, to be more nationalistic in outlook? Because some people say that it would seem that the middle man here is the one giving us issues, the state government. The absence of very strong local government system, which is what we have unfortunately uh, benefited from, the absence of a strong local government system, is the reason behind all uh, factors of insecurity, poor education, poor health services, because it is at that level that some of the problems are supposed to be nipped in the bud. But that is only when you have a very strong system in place with strong leadership. You cannot get strong leadership when the local governments are just uh, at the mercy of a state assembly or state government. Uh, what we want to see is the local governments, in, uh, like the local governments in South Africa, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Australia, in, uh, you know, where, where, there is the, where they operate three chairs, contrary to what our leaders here insist that they do not want to hear a third tier, uh, that the federating units are only the state and the federal government. And I said, that is not working for us, so we should amend whatever we need to amend to adopt what will work for us. If the local government system works, it means that working side by side with the traditional institutions at that level, the problem of drug addiction, the problems of... Uh, of, uh, of, of insecurity and so on will be solved at that level, allowing only that which overwhelms the local government, which is beyond the local government, to move to the state, which then will be solved and have very little left for the federal government to look at. You, have re you seem to be advocating for the scrapping of states, uh, if I'm guessing you clearly. Are, uh, you, are you saying that the, we can do without them? Is that no, what you're no, saying? No, no, I think we've gone too far to go back that way. Mm -hmm. But I'm advocating for st a strong local government system okay. do that, you think that operates autonomously mm -hmm. with full financial and administrative autonomy mm -hmm. and that no matter the inconsistencies in the Constitution, that what we need to do is to remove those inconsistencies because actually some of the inconsistencies are found in the Constitution. Because when you check Section 7 of the Constitution, for example, you find that it says on one hand that the local government administration shall be by democratically elected leaders. And then on another hand, it says that the, 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 that, that, that the finances and the administration are, shall be as per the dictation of the state houses of assembly. So it's a conflict. Mm. So we need to remove all these conflicts and work towards a system that will bring more rapid uh, development of our rural communities, stop rural urban migration, uh, work more with the communities. Because one thing this nation is missed out is the potential, the energies of the population. The population in Nigeria today is more of a liability rather than an asset. And that is because, contrary to the provisions of the Constitution, in, 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 chapter, in, in section 14, uh, 2 subsection, I mean A and C, which says that the participation of the Nigerian people shall be guaranteed under the Constitution. Uh, that is, so far, that is not what we're doing. Mm. And that is why I fault anyone, anyone in this country, who thinks that the problem of this country has anything to do with the Nigerian Constitution. Because we have not even implemented the simplest provisions of that constitution. We have not allowed for participation of the Nigerian people in government as provided for in the constitution. We have not recognized that the fact that sovereignty belongs to the people from whom government shall derive her authorities and powers. We have leaders who know it all, who just dish out whatever uh, they, they want to do, mm -hmm. and the people just sit out there and watch. The constitution never said so. On What's your own. relationship today with the, with the governor, Nasser Arufai? What do you expect? I'm just asking. It's a cordial relation. We, 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 we uh, 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 and I think this is where um, 
the people I come from have, have I, I think, made the greatest of mistakes. Uh, because when you serve under a governor, uh, the whole idea is to support him to succeed, to support the administration to succeed. And when, in doing so, the governor also gives you the privilege of really uh, making decisions along with him. Like, for example, most of our policy statements, most of our, our, our policies in government, some of them were my own personal suggestions. For example, what we did to the local government system is a memo. I'm not saying we picked my memo of 2002 and made a presentation of it in the council, but it fell just in line with what I wrote the government of McAfee then, uh, distinguished Senator McAfee, who was then our governor, as a local government chairman. I cried out then about the burden of, of district heads who were just being harvested and pumped into the local government system without any recourse to the capacity of the local governments to pay. Zangwan Katab in Kaduna State, in the southern part of Kaduna State, had 52 district heads. Kano State had 44. Kaduna State had a total number of district heads that were beyond the Northwest put together. And people thought we should sit on that and do nothing. I supported it that we should make some amendments on that. On education, I was part of it. Some people referred to, to, my, to, to my position in government as that of a sellout. And it, there is nothing I found more hurting than that. Because I believe that today, if I sit in front of an audience in Kaduna State, from any part of Kaduna State, I will defend, I will defend vigorously every single policy of the administration in which I served. Because those policies were either debated and agreed upon just when I was acting deputy governor, because each time the governor left, it wasn't a question of, look, you wait until I come. Don't discuss this. Don't discuss that. I chaired security meetings. And so if people thought we, the government of that, the government of the day was the one actually, all right, actually supporting people to kill, I know better. Because I, I chaired the meetings of security meetings when the governor was not in. And when he was in, I sat by him. So I, I can stand any time and defend each of the policies of that administration, but not to people who have a mindset that says, no, look, uh, the, the, whose mindset is impervious uh, because the, 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 the position they've taken is that of seeing us in the, you know, within the prism of religion and ethnicity. You can't, you can't do anything about that. Mm. And that's how helpless I was. Mm. You can't do anything to someone who has taken a decision not to, not to flow along because he doesn't like the leader. And I think there is something basically wrong uh, to say, I don't like this. Not the policies, but I don't like you. And so both you and your policies, I do not want them. It's, 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 the, most, it's, it's the most dangerous thing to, to the pain that you can self-inflict. Mm. on yourself politically. So considering the fact that you lost um, at the senatorial elections, yeah. would you run again for any political position? And considering the strong views you still hold about you know, the, the state of politics in Kaduna State, would you run to represent your people in anything again in Kaduna? I, I want to take my deserved rest. Uh, I'm entitled to it. I don't think there are too many Nigerians that have been have, that have been uh, into these murky waters of politics for 25 years. Uh, it has taken the whole, the better part of my life. Uh, it has taken its toll sometimes on even my health. It has taken its toll on my finances. Uh, I'm proud, seated before you, to say that, that, that what I had as a young person, I look around and I see less of it now uh, because uh, well, I don't want to go into the details, but, but what I can proudly say is that I have served my people creditably. They, they still love me, uh, but uh, I, I, I don't imagine that... Uh, do you love them? I do. They are my people. 
But I love every other Nigerian as well. Well, it's a fine place to live it. Yes. <laughs> yes, of Barnabas Bala. Thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Okay, thank you very much, Marvin. Well, that's a wrap tonight. I look forward to hearing from you on at CTV Hard Copy or Hard Copy at channelstv.com. Thank you for watching as always. I'm Maupe Ogunyese. Good night.